everyone, I'm Liz and this is Alex and today we're going to be going over our complete packing list of all the gear we brought for the Great Divide mountain bike route. For those of you just tuning in for the first time, we just finished posting all our videos from the Great Divide mountain bike route. We biked a thousand miles this summer and one of the most requested videos, the most requested video our channel has ever received was going over all the gear we brought. So that's what we're gonna do here today because this was our first ever bike tour, bike packing type of a trip. We're gonna be kind of going over what we did bring and what we would have done differently if we are to continue, which we've definitely thought about continuing south at some point. And real quick before we dive into our gear list, I just wanna let you know that everything's gonna be linked down below that we're mentioning. So we spent so much time talking about the bikes that we posted a separate video with this. We opted for the Salsa Fargo and you can hear all about the pros and cons we experienced and just our thoughts in the video linked in the description. So we opted for more of a touring setup for our bike packing trip because we already had four of these panniers that we bought years ago because they were at like half price or less of some REI garage sale. And we didn't want to have to buy just like extra stuff just to have like the classic bike packing setup that's more streamlined. We decided to go just with the gear that we had for the most part. We did get some anywhere cages as well. And I had one frame bag and I, don't, I have mixed feelings about this because it was nice to be able to have stuff so accessible, but also if I put a little bit too much stuff in it, the pedals would constantly rub up against it, or maybe my knee would rub up against it, which wasn't a big deal for like the first little bit of the day, but by the end, it would just be way too much rubbing against my legs. So I might try and find a different solution to have stuff more accessible. I also had this, which is the Ortlieb Classic 6. I think that's what it's called. Basically, it's a waterproof handlebar bag, and I used it for storing easily accessible stuff, mostly my camera though. It's got this nice interior here, and I used a padded insert from one of my camera bags that just so happened to fit really nicely in there, and just stuck my camera in there so it was nice and padded and snug. It locks and it attaches really easily. Like, I highly recommend something like this. Out of everything that I used for the, the setup, this is the thing that I was the most happy with. We also had three of these feeder bags. I had one and Liz had two, uh, you know, for a water bottle and then also for the bear spray because that's something that you need to have accessible when you're in Montana. We had no trouble, but we did see a number of bears as you've probably seen in our previous videos. And by the way, make sure to bring your bear spray. I had these on the front fork of my bike and I didn't love the setup that I had. It could be because I used these Sea to Summit. I had two of these Sea to Summit waterproof bags that aren't really waterproof. And I found that like, there's just not enough structure here to keep them in place. And so even if they were strapped down tightly, they still kind of wobbled around. I would not do that. Maybe there's a better bag that you can mount on the Anywhere cage, but I would not use it with this again. We might consider getting like a water bottle and putting mounting that here. That might be okay, but not with one of those kind of bags. We were a little bit worried about using our own panniers. And the only reason that we use them is because we already had them. We bought them years ago. We were worried because there's some single tracks on the Great Divide and we thought that might make us too bulky for the trail. It turned out not to be too big of a problem for the section we did. So for clothing, we stuck with our layer system that we use backpacking. So we each had base layer tops and bottoms. We had hard shells jackets, we had fleece, and we had puffies as well. And I would recommend sticking with that. We were worried that that was gonna be too much clothing, but it wasn't. There were definitely some cold mornings, so I would recommend having your base layer, your fleece, your puffy, and your hard shell. Also, as part of your layer system, make sure you have hard shell pants. This we debated whether or not we needed and we 100% needed it. If you've seen our videos, you um, will know that. We had a lot of days of rain. 
Okay, so I don't wanna go over each clothing item because this video will be way too long. We each only brought one of the padded liner shorts, but we brought some other underwear to wear at night. So we each had one extra pair of underwear. I brought two sports bras. We each had two buffs. So for those of you who don't know what buffs are, they are these. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people I miss the COVID times probably um, know what buffs are now. But they're very nice because you can use them when you go into stores too. And they are handy to keep the sun off your face. And so definitely recommend these. We each brought two pairs of wool socks and we opted for low top hiking boots. We don't have any bicycle specialty shoes. We ended up going for the low top hiking boots because the guy at the bike shop said those should be fine. So that's what we opted for and they seem to work out really well. For clothing, we're pretty basic. I brought one pair of shorts and I wore those every single day. <laughs> I also brought a pair of lightweight running shorts, which I bring everywhere. These sometimes I used at night. Also, I would use these sometimes over my base layer. They're so lightweight and don't take up much of my space, so I always use those. For shirts, we each brought two daytime shirts. So these are shirts we used for biking and then we each had one nighttime shirt. I learned early on with backpacking that it was nice to have something clean to change into. So that's my personal style. Obviously you don't need to have a nighttime shirt, but for me, I like to have a clean shirt that I go into at night. For gloves, I had these biking gloves with pads. They're the surface and I really, really liked them. Highly recommend, they make them super easy to come off with these little um, hooks. So these were really nice. Alex opted for a very cheap glove to begin with because he just used our old equipment and he ended up getting numbness in his hands. So partway through our trip when we were in Butte, he picked up these gloves and he opted for a full finger glove. So when Alex switched to these, his numbness didn't completely go away. I think he had put too much damage on his hands, but it did become less painful and less numb. So Definitely, I would opt for some quality gloves, would be my advice. I also brought some hard shell gloves and I'm really glad I had these because when it's freezing out and raining, your hands get so numb and you're having to use those to break and if your hands are too numb, you can't break properly and you just, you have no mobility in your hands. So definitely recommend bringing some sort of full fingered gloves as well and two pairs of sunglasses. We didn't have any of the fancy biking sunglasses out there. We just opted for regular sunglasses. I will say as someone who, like me who wears contacts, I found myself stealing Alex's sunglasses that had coverage on the side. So I think when I go and do another bike tour, I'm gonna buy some sunglasses that cover the sides as well. Just because when you're going downhill with the wind hitting your face, I found that my eyes would get super dry and it felt like my contacts were gonna come out. All right, everyone. So this is what we're calling our toiletries slash miscellaneous items. So first off, sunblock, you're gonna go through this like crazy and you're probably gonna need to buy some on the way. We brought this size of a container to start with and within a week already had to buy another size container. We really liked the spray on option, but obviously you can do the other option as well. Bug spray. This is incredibly important in Montana particularly, <laughs> but you're gonna probably need it throughout your trip. We went through, I think, two and a half or three bottles during our two and a half weeks that we bike packed straight. So you're, we go through a lot of this. We only brought one to start and we just picked up other bottles along the way. Hand sanitizer, even pre-COVID, we always brought hand sanitizers when we were in back country because you can't wash your hands. So definitely bring some hand sanitizer. Sea to Summit, lightweight toiletry bag. We brought this, definitely you don't need to bring this. We already had this because we traveled around the world full time before this and we use that the whole time. It's super lightweight though and you can put all your little miscellaneous toiletries in it. I didn't bring our down our toothbrushes and toothpaste because I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. We just brought full-size toothbrushes and I know we've heard of people cutting them in half. We didn't do anything like that, but we brought travel size toothpaste though and then we just bought along the way as needed. 
small little cases for other little products you want. Disposable razor, I know this is totally not a necessity, but it's lightweight and I like it, so I brought it. Jammy cream, we did not bring this hunk of thing. We put it in this container here. So for people who don't know what chamois cream is, like I didn't until we decided to embark on this. This was like one of the number one things that the man we spoke to at the bike shop recommended. So this helps prevent the saddle sores that can happen when you're riding all day long. I and mean, I did find this helped a lot. We ended up going through this entire thing and then granted this is both of us using it but we went through it in two weeks and so we had to buy some more along the way which we were able to find if you're a contact user like myself remember to bring your contacts i brought dailies just because i wasn't sure how clean my hands were going to be but you could definitely bring just some contact solution in case also don't forget your glasses face wipes deodorant we didn't use this that much honestly you're in back roads you're going to smell either way <laughs> floss chopstick we also brought SVF chapstick as well, which we are glad to have because you're in the sun just all day long and we've definitely had really bad burnt lips and they're very unpleasant. So definitely bring chapstick, but also SVF chapstick. We brought I have little containers like this with vitamins and medicines. Definitely bring ibuprofen, acetaminophen, and then we brought vitamins. Obviously you don't need to bring this, but we did because we knew we were gonna be eating garbage food <laughs> as we were traveling. And so I like these little handy containers for that purpose. Big advice we got from the man at the bike shop who's done the Continental Divide Trail was bring tons of wipes and take a bath essentially in wipes every single night. And this I think really helped prevent us from getting like extremely bad butt sores. Like if you watched our series, you probably know we, we were in some pain. <laughs> oh, sore. Yeah, my butt bones are sore. But we went from literally zero training to biking eight to 10 hours a day. And I think we would have been much worse off if we hadn't bathed every single night in wipes. So from what we understand that bacteria can contribute to that area and developing, like we've heard of people developing like infections and um, abscesses. And so definitely, and we're really glad we brought wipes. We ended up having using more than we had anticipated. I think we had allotted two per person per day and we more like average three or four wipes per person per day. So definitely bring lots of wipes. For other females like myself, I use the Diva Cup as my feminine hygiene need, and that's all I bring. Um, and this worked great. And toilet paper. This, obviously, you need toilet paper. Don't forget to bring Ziploc bags, either Ziploc bags or reusable bags to carry this out. We always have a dedicated Ziploc bag that we put all our dirty wipes in. And then whenever we find access to a garbage can, we dispose of those dirty toilet paper. So now I'm gonna go over the camping equipment that we used. We opted for these Z-Lite Thermarest pads and we took one a while ago and cut it in half. We thought we were gonna bring these with us in our around the world trip, but we didn't. These were fine, I mean, it's going to be uncomfortable. We would consider buying one of those blow up pads or one of those like low profile air ones. Uh, so if anybody has any recommendations, let us know. Cause I think that might be, we might be better off with those. Our tent, we have the Big Agnes Fly Creek Mountain Glow backpacking tent. There is a bike packing version of this tent, which I know a lot of bike packers use. I think it's a little bit more compact than this one. We have mixed feelings on it. It's great because it's lightweight, just, you know, with a, foot, with a footprint and everything, it's two pounds. But the problem is it does not hold up in poor weather. And we had a number of times where either condensation got trapped or the rain leaked through the rain fly and you know, I'm not, I'm not sure I would use it again. Obviously, you want to bring your propane and your stove. This is nothing special. It's just kind of a generic backpacking stove. It was our first one. We debated between this and the jet boil, but we wanted to cook our own food. So we opted for this since I don't think that jet boil is really meant for cooking. This tent comes with the pot and a couple of these, and these actually separate out and we keep the stove part that just screws on to the propane in here and we have our little plastic 
forks and, or I guess they're sporks that go inside it. For a sleeping bag, we have had these for years. This is the REI Igneo and there's a female version of it, which is what Liz has. It goes by a different name, but it's basically the same bag. It's rated to 10 or 15 degrees. It was sufficient for the bikepacking trip. We aren't gonna go over food because that's super particular to each person, but we definitely wanted to talk about hydration. We had four of the squeeze style water bottles. These, this one's we dedicated to Noom water, and these ones we dedicated to just plain water. For those of you who don't know what Noom it, Nooms are, we used these a lot during our trip. They are for hydration, they have your electrolytes, you can get ones with caffeine as well and vitamins. So we use those a lot and we would put them in here. We brought these, which are bladders we use for backpacking and like mountaineering, but we actually would not recommend bringing these. When we do another bike tour, we're gonna bring just some extra big Nalgene bottles and use that as our extra water storage because these were kind of awkward and they didn't fit very well and they get nasty. And so they, we just, we wouldn't recommend doing this. And then for our filtration system, we just have the Grail water bottle. This is the lightweight version. So literally all our water, besides when we were able to get it at camps and if we were in a town, sometimes people would let you use their water at their store. But this we used for most of our water and it was kind of a pain, I'm not gonna lie. We have the Platypus, which is a gravity filter system where it does four liters of water at a time and it isn't very manual because you just hang it up on something and we definitely debated bringing that but it's much more bulky and we are glad we opted for this instead because it's super lightweight and you can just get water on the go but that being said i think we're going to opt for the bare version of this next time because it just takes like you don't even get a liter of water out of this so you have to do a lot of water at a time so we usually would spend probably a good half an hour at least each day just filtering water. All right, for regular bike maintenance stuff, we've got multi-tool, pump, chain lube, sealant, which we never used. Bike lock, hardly used it. Extra inner tube in case there was a problem with the tubeless, there never was. Bike lights. This is, I never had to use it, but this is a dart, I think is what it's called. It's to, if your sealant isn't working in your tire, you stick this in and you pull it out and it leaves some bit of this material inside there and kind of seals up the bigger holes. Core remover, we had these little CO2 cartridges as well as a pump. We didn't really use these except for once on one of our section biking trips and then we use the pump more often. We really didn't have any tire problems, but these are good and lightweight to bring. You also have to make sure you get one of these, which is the connector point to your tire. Zip ties, in case anything breaks, we never used them. And extra cores, this is something we didn't use. Someone recommended this to us. The tires on our bikes are the Presta valve, and I have heard that sometimes if you're putting in sealant, it can shoot the cores out if you aren't careful, and if you lose a core, then you have a, com a permanently flat tire. So you have some extra cores in case you lose one of your existing cores. And finally, we have our electronic section. And obviously, if you aren't documenting your trip, all of this stuff is completely optional. I did bring a GPS watch, which I use for lots of different activities, running, hiking, biking, you know, any kind of outdoor activity uses to track it. It's how we were able to determine, you know, where to start, where to end, and we can go back and find our GPS tracks on the Garmin website, which is nice. We brought Kindles, but we never used them. So I don't know if we just were like pushing our days too much, but we really, like with the exception of a couple of times, we never really used our Kindles. GoPros, we each had a GoPro. And we started off with these little handlebar mounts, but I would not recommend this. I'd probably use a chest mount in the future or maybe a helmet mount because the, if you saw in our video, the angle's kind of weird. It's on the handlebar pointing up at you. It doesn't really look very good and they're just kind of bulky and heavy. So I'd maybe find an alternative to this. 
We have one of these battery packs. It actually has three. It has three USB ports, so you can charge three things at a time. I think it's 26,000 milliamps. I could be wrong, but it's, it's, very, it's the highest capacity one out there that I could find. We had two of these, one for me and one for Liz, and every night we definitely use this to charge our phones, which we used for navigation, to charge our GPS watch, to charge one or both of the GoPros. So it was definitely heavily used. It seems excessive, but we use it a lot. We brought our drone, which is the DJI Mavic Air, and it's a, it's a great little drone. We had it on our around the world trip. It's lightweight and small, so it didn't, it wasn't that much extra weight. Obviously, once again, this is completely optional. You really only need this if you want to get some really cool drone shots. There's the camera and lens that I'm filming on now, which is the Canon EOS R and the 15 to 35 lens. I also have this, which is my medium telephoto lens. I hardly use this just because I didn't have a convenient place to put it and it was difficult to switch lenses because I have to dig into my pannier. So I may not have needed this. I filmed on that lens most of the time because it's sharper. We really hope this helps some of you. We know some of you are planning on doing the Great Divide within the next year or two, which is super exciting. Definitely let us know. We'd love to hear how that goes. Also, if you guys have any other videos you want specifically about the Great Divide or anything else, let us know down in the comments below. We've seen some requests and if we get enough people who are wanting us to shoot a particular type of video, we'll definitely do that. And we'll see you in our next video.